change this day to me. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you our all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive a prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, 
Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. God creates humankind as the ultimate act of love in the story of creation. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. The day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. <clears throat> and there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. <clears throat> and God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth 
and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Apostle Paul encourages the church in Corinth to live the life of faith, a reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, all the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord.
the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, to God who is, and who was, and who is to come. Alleluia. The disciples receive the Great Commission, the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Holy Creator God, draw us into the tether of your presence that our lives might reflect the power of your love. In Christ's name we ask this. Amen. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. Those words of Charles Dickens from A Tale of Two Cities kept coming to my mind this week for lately we can all relate to them in the days of the here and now. But this morning we are also heartened to be able to gather once again as a worshiping community after such a long time of being away. Although things are a long way from being back to normal, there are signs of hope. And we have been privy to amazing stories of courage in all crises that confront the world as well as our nation in particular. Today is Trinity Sunday. And although talking about the Trinity might seem like the last thing on our minds right now, please bear with me. When I was a seminarian in Chicago, I told my advisor, a noted authority on preaching, that I had been invited back to my home parish to preach on Trinity Sunday. His response was, well, I hope you won't presume to explain the Trinity. That comment was followed by a conversation I heard between two other faculty members, one of whom said to the other that he had never heard a decent Sunday. Those comments, together with the fact that the priest who scheduled preaching back here at St. Michael's was often guilty of trying to trip others up, including me, 
made me feel as though I'd been caught in a slam dunk trap. As Greg Carey, professor of New Testament at Lancaster Theological Seminary writes, preaching about the Trinity is hard. As a seminary professor, I read students' faith statements and I see how they struggle. Fact is, I struggle too. Every time I'm asked a Trinity-related question, I sense I'm standing on the heresy cliff, the ground crumbling under me. Yet, he says, the key to proclaiming the Trinity is to remember that it is good news. Of the two creation stories in Genesis, the one today speaks a beautiful and poetic truth. Scripture has no interest in the modern question of, does God exist? Scripture's question is, who is the God who is? In Genesis, God says, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. Trinitarian language attempts to break out of boundaries and broaden our understanding of the eternal we and us, spoken of so often in the Old Testament. So we shouldn't be surprised that the root of the word Trinity is unity. To experience one person of the Trinity is to experience all. This God in whose likeness we are made gives humanity dominion over all creation. But we need to remember that in Hebrew, the word dominion is more correctly translated as responsibility. And that is a profound difference. God declares as good all that God has made. But to say that creation is good is not to say that it is perfect. There's a shadow side to creation because God gifts us with freedom. The freedom to love God and all creation or not. In today's gospel, Jesus commissions the disciples to go forth and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything he has commanded them, reminding us that Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. A wonderful confirmation program for teenagers requires many things of them, including a ministry project as well as a pilgrimage. It's not an easy program as I understand it, and those who decide they're not ready to be confirmed are not to be pressured by either the church or their parents to make that decision. But for those who do, at the end of the program, they gather together in the darkened church. Parents on one side of the church, the youth on the other side. And at the appropriate time in the liturgy, the confirmands step across the aisle and receive back from their parents 
their own lit baptismal candle as sign that they have made the conscious decision to live as Christ's disciples in this world. But commitment is difficult. Perhaps that's what the gospel means when it says some doubted. Although many scholars think that refers to those who belong to a larger group of people with the disciples on the mountain, it boils down to the same thing. But history is full of those who have committed to Christ, providing us with extraordinary examples of the power of Christian discipleship. Shortly before that first time I preached on Trinity Sunday, as my nine-year-old daughter and I were attempting to cross a busy intersection in downtown Chicago, an elderly woman took a terrible fall. Almost instantly, a group of people gathered around her, men and women of various sizes and colors. A black man helped her to her feet. She was shaking and trembling. Others came, picked up her belongings, and brushed her off. My daughter knelt down in the dirt of the city street to pick up all her change, a few coins for the bus. I picked up her bus card and tried to see if she was badly hurt. Finally, one of the men took it upon in that moment was that we acted out of the image in which we were created. Because in those brief moments, we were completely one. And what overwhelmed me that day now long ago is that the love I experienced that morning was powerful enough that I genuinely felt love for that sad little lady whose lipstick wasn't quite straight and whose clothes were tattered. And although I could not then, nor would I ever presume to completely understand the mystery of the Trinity, I have always felt that what I experienced then was an example of what God must be like. Unity of personhood and relationship, whose power is the power of love, love great enough to even bring life out of death. This is the creator we are called to worship with reverence and awe one who calls us to reach out to others in Christ's name and for with God on this earth. We willing to hold fast to our baptismal promises. At this moment in time, our answer 
may be more important than we can possibly imagine. Amen. Please stand with me as you are able, and let us together confess our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Bound together in Christ's spirit, let us pray with one heart and mind to God our Father.
ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, Lord. Almighty God, thanks for being able to gather together on this day. We ask your prayers for all of those who are out showing their with their voices the need of justice for all in our nation and in our communities. May this be a time that that we all hear and that we come together as a nation and provide finally equal justice for all. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who created all things by your eternal word. Hear the prayers we offer this day and breathe upon us with your spirit through Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sin to God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And a note on the peace. We will not leave our spaces where we are. You're encouraged to uh, offer your peace to the people around you in many different forms. Um, uh, we were, I was taught uh, by Amy and the St. Thomas Church for the Deaf, uh, peace be with you. You keep your hands pointing to the sky like this, be with you. I was doing it wrong. I was doing peace, and that's making a hamburger. So <laughs> that may be on your minds as well, of course. But the peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, that was the shortest piece that we've ever had at Grace Church, but, but very socially distanced, so thank you all. Uh, a few things uh, we do have uh, as you leave today, if you would like palms, we have the palms that were blessed on Palm Sunday. No one was here, it was just limited uh, to a very small uh, people, but you saw it live streamed, uh, and um, those palms that were blessed are now available to you. Those of you who are at home and would like palms, we do have them, uh, we do have them, we will save them for you, uh, so be assured of that. And anyone at home that would uh, like to be with us next week, if we can meet, remember this is week by week, uh, depending on the situation um, with uh, COVID cases in St. Louis County and the guidelines of the CDC, the state, and the county government, and the offices of the bishops. So. We have a lot of people looking out for us, and we want to live into the safest uh, way possible. Um, uh, so remember that it is week by week, and so we don't take this for granted uh, at all. I hope none of us do. But the palms will be handed out by the ushers, will be handed to you, so do not grab them. Uh, they will be handed to you, uh, and they're wearing gloves. Um, so that is available. The offering, offering plates will not be passed. Uh, we may have had a lot more people join us today if they knew there was no offering being passed. Uh, uh, yes, <laughs> no offering. Uh, but there is an offering, actually. It's uh, by the baptismal font uh, in a basket. You can place your offerings there, either before the service or after. And um, we will bring uh, the offering that's there uh, shortly up to the, to the altar. 
but uh, we will not be passing any plates. In the parish hall, we are able to gather socially at six feet distance apart with a mask on. Remember, in our building, masks must be on at all times in our building. Uh, the only exceptions are the celebrant when consecrating um, the, the sacrament um, and when you lift yours to consume, uh, to consume at a distance uh, the, the full sacrament in the form of the bread only. Uh, so those are, um, those are available. But we do have in the parish hall, we have a complete setup. There's no food, but there is uh, a beverage available for you. You won't touch a thing. It'll be prepared for you. Um, and there, as long as you're six feet apart, you can lift your mask temporarily to take a sip and then put it back on. I know a lot of instructions. These have all been written out. They're posted on our website. And we have written copies in the back as well. So please be, uh, be um, aware of those, and, and it's all for your safety, not only to keep us all safe, but also to show those that are watching us um, giving a, a good example um, to the community and making sure that um, we do our part um, here at Grace. So uh, welcome this morning to everyone. I'm sorry for such long announcements. Uh, but I want to make sure, remember at communion, you stand by one of the signs of a closed pew that will keep you six feet apart. You need to be as individuals, so if you're here as a household, stay uh, as individuals, stay six feet apart in the center aisle. You're going to be in the center of the aisle, not on the sides. We are not forming two lines as we normally would. It's a center, center of the aisle, a single line, and households should break up um, six feet apart as they're coming up. I'm sure I've forgotten something. Uh, is, there, is it clear for everyone how we are going to proceed? Very good. Then I'll remind you that the altar before you is God's altar for all of God's people. If you are a Christian, regardless of what denomination you come from, we in the Episcopal Church welcome you, and we invite you to receive communion with us today. Uh, during this time, we receive communion only in the palm of our hands, outstretched hands as we approach the priest, and uh, we do need to use hand sanitizer before we do that. Uh, but everyone is welcome, all baptized Christians are welcome to receive communion. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For with your co eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one in equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you've delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ in his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where Matthew, our patron, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, 
and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. gifts of God, for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen.
in peace to love and serve the Lord. Mm-hmm. 